player, I am loading the equipment overview. Hey everybody, it's TK1138, and I am finally getting to my End War loadout video. Now I have fallen a little bit behind, I haven't put out as much End War specific content this year, because a whole bunch of stuff kind of came together at one time. I'm leaving one job, starting a new job, moving to a new city, finding and selling a house, and literally all of this is happening the week before and after End War. So it's been crazy. So I'm really glad I'm finally getting to do this video. And it's actually going to be a little bit different than my previous two videos. So in 2017, I went through every piece of my gear and I provided links and how much it costs and where to get it. I did the exact same thing in 2018 where I revised my gear and a lot of things changed and I provided links for all that sort of stuff. And uh, basically it was a lot like 2017. This year is going to be different. Um, my loadout really hasn't changed much, th much this year. Um, it's actually been really stable, which is a good thing. Um, and I'll, I'll get into that in here in a minute. So most of the stuff I'm using this year, I'm just gonna kind of refer to anecdotally. I'm just gonna be like, oh, my tactical belt, or oh, my chest rig. I might name it off in, you know, by its actual name if I remember it. If not, for the most part, you can go to my 2018 loadout video, which you'll be able to find in the videos section of my channel and find all those links in the description. I'll probably just copy pasta the 2018 links into 2019, but I'm not going to get hung up on what the gear is so much. You'll be able to get that in the links, but why I've used it and how it's, how it's helped me over the last year. Um, again, I've been wearing some of this gear now for two years, some of it for a year, and it's gone through SCNC or Atomic or N War, or a lot of other games, so it's really tried and true stuff. Nothing I'm going to be showing today with the exception of like one or two pieces is new, so I will be able to really give you my thoughts on how it is, how it functions, and most importantly, why I'm using it on my loadout. Because more than the previous two years in Athens, this year in Statesboro, it is all about packing well, because otherwise you are going to be in a world of trouble. So let's get started. All right, so we are gonna go in order of how I put my gear on, because to me that just makes the most sense and takes the least amount of time for me to cover. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and start with uh, another strange one. I covered it last year. I think I covered it in 2017, and I still live by this piece of gear. Now, this is good for anybody, to be honest. But if you're like me and you wear a drop leg, this is critical. Especially if you wear that drop leg attached to your waist belt. And I'm going to say waist belt as opposed to like tactical belt. Even though both of them can be tactical belts and both can be waist belts, I need to differentiate. Uh, my tactical belt has straps that come over my shoulder. My waist belt holds my pants up. Um, I wear my drop leg stuff, which I'll cover in a little bit, attached to my waist belt. Um, but that means that puts a lot of weight on your pants. So once again, tactical suspenders are the way to go. I've actually, this is what, really funny. Suspenders are one of the pieces of gear most of, like if anyone actually messages me about gear, this is actually in the top three pieces of gear. I'm not even kidding guys. Now what I use, I bought these, I think at Walmart, they have this style hook design which hooks on your belt holds your pants up. If you are the kind of person who is wearing these suspenders to help hold up your, your waist belt or not, yeah, to do that, and your drop legs, you're probably wearing a lot of gear and these are the type to get. You do not want the clasping style suspenders as if something rubs up against them, you run the risk of popping your suspenders off and then that's like trying to like wiggle through a whole bunch of gear, trying to put it back on. So I don't care if I'm playing Southeast Nerf Club, Atomic Dart League, or HVZN War, I'm typically wearing some suspenders under this shirt because guys, it's a really helpful piece of equipment. And I'm gonna be honest, when I, I think it was probably like 2014, there was a really great picture. I thought I was looking awesome. You know, the photographer got this awesome shot of me, butt crack, not even kidding. And that was the day I said, never again. So suspenders, and they are super helpful. Definitely, definitely high on the list. Get some. Right, so I did just spend like two minutes covering something as simple but critical as suspenders. Again, I rank them as critical because I run around a lot and I have a lot of lower body gear, including two drop leg platforms. Drop leg platforms do come with some issues that you have to kind of be aware of and balance and correct for. Namely that they are going to be prone to more movement than any other piece on um, most loadouts, you know, with the exception of like a slung blaster. 
Um, so as your legs are running, these are moving and things can fall out if they're not properly secured. So you need to be mindful that if you're gonna run a drop leg, anything. So I'm gonna cover my drop leg platforms and what I've done to kind of help take care of that. So once again, I am running the Condor Molly drop leg platform. It is a two strap system, which I definitely recommend because it's not going anywhere. It does have the modified four mag holder on it um, with the link down below. It originally had a fabric divider, which I did remove with a seam ripper, and I've instead replaced it with my own cardboard um, divider. It's got wings at the bottom so it doesn't go out anywhere, but the advantage to the cardboard divider is it helps make sure my magazines are easy to pull in and out, but still secure enough that they don't bounce around too much. Now you'll notice they do bounce around a little bit, um, and that's just kind of a sacrifice I've made personally to be able to pull them out. A lot of them do come with like elastic straps over them. Those are ideal if you're trying to make sure your gear doesn't pop off. Because again, these things are going to move everywhere and you wanna make sure they're nice and secure. Um, I just don't like bungee cords, so I took them off. This year again, I am running my Strife um, on a drop leg holster. This is the Apex Tactical Holster. I don't even know if he's still around anymore, guys. Um, but this is my modified holster with my Southeast Nerf Club patch and I'm running my sidearm strife. This year I'm changing it up from my 43 millimeter Morpheus cage from Open Flywheel Project to instead feature the number 38 Nyx cage and wheels from Lord Draconical, um, making it a really solid HVZ sidearm with once again a small six dart magazine so that it's not waving around too much. Um, because again, as I mentioned earlier, gear that's on your leg is prone to moving around a whole lot and you want to make sure that if you have anything at all strapped to your legs that it's not going anywhere. Right so continuing on with my series of awkward camera angles we now come to my battle belt. Here we go. So this battle belt for the most part is exactly like the one I ran in 2018. It does feature two collapsible um, dump pouches. I've got one open and deployed here and the other one still folded up on the back. This one I'll typically keep full of loose darts, about a hundred of them, so that as I'm using magazines and putting empty mags back in my stage one loading area, um, which I'll cover in the magazine section, but that's my chest rig, I can continuously top them off from here and my drop leg. Uh, the one in the back I usually keep socks in. Um, I do also have a little pouch here for my phone, my wallet keys, stuff I want to have easily accessible, you know, because these pockets aren't typically helpful anymore and my BOFTAC 3 mag holder. So this would be my stage three ammo. Remember that, we're gonna come back to it. It's gonna be on the exam. And then of course, I've got a couple small grenade pouches here. I keep a whole bunch of cool SE and C pouch, uh, patches out here. So if I see you and you want an SE and C patch and we're at end war, let, hit me up, man. And if, you know, if we're not shooting somebody, and I will gladly give you one of these patches. Um, and then I have a spare lipo and some snacks. It's a cliff bar in here just so that way I can keep both my blaster and myself energized. Right, so finally we are getting above the waist, thank God, um, with my chest rig. This is the Vism by NC Star AK chest rig. This particular one I've had for three years of heavy use in nerfing and it's still going strong. For 20 bucks, this was an excellent purchase. It does carry six magazines. I typically load it with five and I'll get into that here in a minute of why I do that. But along with that, it has plenty of room for patches. I've modified it with some white. In here, I keep a whole bunch of um, packaged darts just in case I need them. And in here, I keep my radio and some more snacks. If you can't tell, I really like snacks. So there are snacks literally hidden all over my body, everywhere. But snacks are very important. Um, and this makes an excellent addition to the loadout keeping my mags right where I need them so I can pull them out and load. So the piece of gear I'm about to cover is definitely mission critical, no ifs, ands, or buts. Other than a good pair of running shoes and a good blaster or socks, this is the next most important thing, especially this year, more so than even the last two years. So um, I grew up in Germany, but I grew up in HVZ in South Georgia. Now even more so south than Georgia Southern University is Valdosta State University in Valdosta, Georgia, and it gets hot. This year we're expecting temperatures upwards of 97 degrees with high levels of humidity, which means your sweat will not evaporate very quickly. 
and you will need to be drinking. So obviously we're segueing right into a hydro pack. This is my hydro pack. That is a three liter hydro pack um, that I also carry a whole bunch of spare darts in, first aid kits, snacks, spare batteries, just all sorts of little doodads and whatnot. But you don't need a super expensive, awesome Molly tactical hydro pack. Walmart's got them for like 20 bucks, guys. Even just to get a bladder and a hose, you're gonna need it. Because there were people who were complaining about the heat of HVZNOR 2017 and 2018. That was 80 degrees on mission two. 80. We're talking upwards of 16 or 17 degrees hotter, plus way more humid. If you had problems at last year's end war, you're going to have even bigger problems this year. The weather and the climate will take out more humans than the zombies will. I'm not even kidding. Again, I grew up HVZ in this kind of climate and it is brutal. So make sure you are properly hydrating. I will drain this three liter hydro pack in about an hour and a half, two hours. And I will refill it first thing. Before I even refill my blaster, before I refill my mags, I'm gonna be refilling my hydro pack and you should too. I guess that sounded a little stern, but I'm not even kidding. All of us are gonna make it to the final stand one way or another, human or zombie. The only way you will not make it to the final stand is if you are laid out in the student union because you've overheated. So let's all make it to the final stand together. By now you're probably wondering what else could I possibly still have to cover? And you'd be surprised that there's still a few things left. So bear with me. Um, first and foremost, from the neck up, we're going to talk about hats. I'm going to be honest with you. Nobody's hair is going to look good at this event. If you're the kind of person who likes to have stylized hair, it's not going to happen playing HVZ in Statesboro. It's going to be too hot. It's going to be too humid and you're going to look like a mess. So you might as well just go wear head and wear a hat. I will be obviously because it's right here, but super helpful to have. Along with that, I have my earpiece to my radio. That's my Baofeng BF8 SSA radio. Same ones I ran last year, connected to the Snack Squad Net. Now, Snack Squad Net last year had 75 registered users. This year, we're currently upwards of 90 something as we've extended it to a couple other clubs um, with a couple private channels built in and everything, but this allows the humans and the zombies to coordinate with each other. Very useful to have. Um, so I've got that. But also, I have a second microphone to a voice amplifier. Because last year, by the end of day two, I sounded like Christian Bale's Batman. Where are the other drugs going? And this year, I kind of want to preserve my voice a little bit because on Sunday, I'm hosting the Phone Pro Tour with my partners, Jesse and Jackie, from the Atomic Dart League, and I need to be able to speak. So, went ahead and got one of these. Now, the single most important piece of gear you're going to wear from the neck up, and as a piece of gear, like... A lot of people kind of bat off. I don't know why. I mean, if you're watching this channel, you know how I feel about it, but that's iPro. I've played HVZ a lot. I've got like 1,200 hours of HVZ, and yet I always see people say, it's not required, and I completely disagree. If you're gonna get shot, you're gonna want them. If you're gonna be running, you're gonna want them. I mean, just generally, you're gonna want them. So for the daytime, I have my tinted um, sunglasses that are from Flux. Um, really solid, really inexpensive, and very durable. I like these, but I also carry a backup pair of clear sunglasses just in case, you know, for night missions, because we will have at least uh, two later missions, a 6.30 p.m. and a 10 p.m. So you still want to protect your eyes without having the tint, so get clear ones. Uh, so to round off the last piece of wearable gear, I do have my Cybertron fingerless gloves, which are immensely helpful for when I do inevitably turn zombie, but also just look kind of cool, and then my wristwatch. You're not always gonna have the ability, inclination, or access to your phone. So you're gonna want a wristwatch just to kinda know what time of day it is, uh, mission time, all that sort of stuff. So really good to have. And that really brings us to the very nearly end of our gear video. So the last piece of gear I'm gonna cover really shouldn't be a surprise to anyone, and that's my end war primary, the FDL3. Now this is my third end war, and this is also my third end war with an FDL product. I had the 2 Plus in 17, the 2X in 2018, and now the 3 for 2019. And I'm really excited because this blaster has a lot of the things that I'd always wanted to see in it, especially the easy access buttons, which lets me change between my fire sets, between single, two round, and full auto, which is great for having a lot of variety in you know humans versus zombies. But on top of that, I still have my red dot sight, 
and the new V4 ammo counter um, and barrel so I can see how many darts I have left on the side. Very nice. And my flashlight. Now the flashlight is the same flashlight I've, I've, that I've had in the last two years, but with a change. It's got a red gel on it. This is not just an option, it's a requirement. If you're going to be playing with a flashlight, whether that's a headlamp, a hand torch, or a blaster mounted light this year in Statesboro, your light needs to be red. It is a requirement and any white lights will be told to be turned off. You will not be able to use them. So if you wanna see where you're going and on the night mission, make sure you got yourself a red light. Now, several times in this video, I talked about my magazines and that I would cover that in depth later on. So here we are. Um, I have 13 magazines on this rig. My 2018 was the same and my 2017 was actually three mags heavier. So I've actually downsized my magazines, but I've improved my efficiency in how I use them. So even though I technically carried less magazines on my person last year, I use them far more effectively. And I'm going to explain the, the kind of thought process behind why I have my magazines loaded the way I do and why I have everything strapped the way I do um, and how it's helped me out. So originally my 2017 loadout had an additional three mags here and three mags on this side and a three mag drop leg holster. It made me kind of a little round in the middle in terms of magazines um, and I couldn't pull all of them terribly well. But I said, I was like, oh, I need them on my chest so they're easy to draw. However, not all of my magazine zones need to be equal. And that's kind of where I've uh, developed my HVZ loadout. So I call this my, my stage one. I have six mags available, but I only have five in here. Here's the six, so that I always have an empty spot to place a mag. It's just a useful thing if you're gonna be doing quick reloads and you wanna make sure you have an extra parking spot. Now, most of the time, this is where I'm gonna be pulling my mags from. If I'm engaging in a fight, this is where I'm gonna be pulling them. I actually don't even pull them directly from my drop leg as a reload unless like I am really, really deep into it, guys. Because what I'll do otherwise, if you know I go through two or three of these mags and then we have walk time, I will go ahead and I will take out these magazines, put them in my drop leg, the empty ones, and put some refreshed ones up here. Then as I'm walking, using my dump pouch to be topping off the magazines. Because my dump pouch and my drop leg are only a few inches apart, so I can be sitting here walking and taking mat darts out of my pouch and loading my magazines without looking and without moving my hand all the way up and down, just really quick and easy, moving those darts from the pouch to the magazines, and then when they're reloaded, you're good to go. So that's why I call that my second stage loading area. So I'll be pulling predominantly from here, but I can pull from these in the case of an emergency. Like, this is gonna be a little bit loud, but if I absolutely need to, I can drop my mag out and load it from my drop leg. And it's not as practiced, it's not as clean as my chest, but it's still a practiced one that I've been, I've been working on. But the thing is, from here to here is, is about 12 inches. From here to here is 36 inches. So that means I'm not only using more time, I'm doing a longer draw to load from there to there, which is why you typically want to keep your, your workspace, which is where your hands operate, work, workspace, you want to keep that in a, in a box. It's about 18 inches wide, 18 inches deep, 18 inches tall. So XYZ, an 18 inch box right in front of you. You want your hands, your blasters, and your primary ammo in that box. And that makes it things a lot easier to repeat and a lot quicker. But in the event, I can still load from that drop leg, but I try not to. Now what I also have here on my back are three more mags. That's what I call my, my stage three. These ones I always keep loaded and I only ever use these ones if I've started depleting the crap out of everything else. I'll pull three of these out and swap them out with fresh ones. But if I'm reaching for these ones, that typically means it's been a pretty active firefight and that I've already exhausted these 10 magazines. But you always want to keep a couple of empty ones available and some loose darts to top off. A lot of people think in terms of just straight numbers. Um, for instance, I have 240 loaded darts on my gear. I have 234 loaded into 13 18 round magazines and a six round magazine in my strife, 240. However, I carry about another 100, 120 in a dump pouch. So that goes ahead and brings me up to 340 or 360 uh, darts. That's a lot of darts. And you have to understand you will be able to replenish between missions. So like in the staging area, in the union, at the briefings, you're gonna go ahead and be topping off your hydro pack that's the first thing, making sure you're hydrated 
and then load in your magazines for the next mission. But the whole point is you don't need to carry 30 magazines because truthfully, well, I, want to, I don't want to say there's not going to be a time we're going to use 30 magazines. There very well could be. Depends on your play style. My particular play style is a little bit more um, precise shooting, but nonetheless, even if I switch this thing into full auto, I'm going to go through mags, but I want to have that ability to, to keep topping them off. You can see in a lot of my uh, End War videos, especially the ones from 2018, that if I'm walking, I am constantly loading darts. Because if you're not shooting someone, you should go ahead and be topping them up. That'll make what gear you carry last that much longer. Other than how you load your magazines, the last thing you definitely want to make sure you're doing on your gear before you go to a big long duration event like an HVZ Invitational, like HVZ End War, is you want to make sure everything is really well secured. You don't want stuff wiggling around, you don't want stuff that swings around, you don't want stuff that's going to rub you. Because by the end of day one, chafing will kill you. Okay, not literally kill you, but you're not going to want to walk. You're going to wish you could just stay home. It's bad. So if you've got straps that rub on you, you want to go ahead and address those. You want to tighten everything down. You want to make sure all of your loose straps are secured so they don't get hung up on stuff. I watched a guy last year, now granted it didn't happen during gameplay, he had a, a, a strap that came off of a, a backpack or something, and as he was walking through a door frame, that strap caught on the doorknob and it jerked him off his feet and dropped him to the ground. That could have happened in gameplay, just because you got all these straps everywhere. Most people aren't wearing tactical gear every day, so unless you're very familiar with how it is, it, you know, you're going to bump things and you, know, you have to get used to how it is. My wife has had to get used to me walking around the house in this every now and then because like if I get new gear, I'll load it all up and I'll walk around the house, I'll do dishes, I'll, you know, play with the kids. They probably think it's just crazy. But you know, getting used to where everything is so you you quit bumping it. So now I can just reach everywhere and know exactly where everything is cuz it's nice and secured. But that also means it doesn't really go very far and and that's important because if it's swinging, it's going to throw off your run. So Definitely make sure everything's locked down good and tight, but not too tight. That'd be bad too. So at the time of recording this, I have no idea how long this video is, but it's probably going to be a long one. But again, I wanted to cover what gear I'm using and how familiar it was between the 2018 and now, which is a good sign. Gear stability means I've gotten it to where I want it, but also why I'm doing it and the little tips and tricks like how to lock it down and maintain that, that ability to keep your workspace nice and clean. Um, it's worked really well for me. I'm very confident going into 2019 in this gear because it, nothing's new except this, but I've already put hundreds of hours into this blaster. Um, nothing else is new and I'm gonna be able to go into it with that confidence of knowing where everything is. So I'm definitely looking forward to HVZ NWAR in one week. Um, definitely if you see me, stop by and say, hey, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them in the comments down below. I'll also have the links to pretty much all of this gear down in the description. If I miss something, definitely feel free to ask and I will, I'll send you a link for it. Um, thanks for tuning in for this ridiculously long video and I hope to see many of you in one week in Statesboro. And if not, you will be able to find my footage pretty quickly after the event right here on my YouTube channel. So if you're not already subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. This has been TK1138. Nerf well, my friends.